Hey everyone, my name is Cezarin and this is a Slayer guide, mostly focusing on two-handed Cyclone and uh, it'll be fairly easy to follow for new players and we'll try to like mix it in with our other Gladiator guides. So if you want to do one-handed, then uh, you can uh, go between the builds and see what you need. First, I'm going to start by explaining how we use Path of Building in the guides and we use it quite a lot more than most guides you might be used to. If you've already seen this part, you can move to the description down below and click a timestamp button to skip directly to the guide. So first you need Path of Building. Path of Building is a third party program that you can download and it's in the description down below. It's completely safe and most people use it. It's a very powerful tool that lets you plan out your builds and import items, stuff like that. Now, once you have Path of Building, you can go and import the Path of Building link here by pasting it here. Once you have that, it should look... Well, depends what build you're importing, because I'll use this for everything. But uh, it should look like the build of the video you're watching. And what we do, and I'm using a Gladiator Sunder Cyclone build here as an example, I show a step-by-step -step of what the skill tree looks like at certain levels. So at early levels, it's very, very easy, especially if you're a new player, to follow. And I also say when to ascend, and the um, and the ascension points are generally here. And I'll talk about that in the specific video as well, and why things are chosen. Um, but as you can see, the skill tree is evolving over time, and sometimes there will, there will be variations for, you know, if it's like different weapons, if it's one hander, two hander, and a lot of things like that. But wait, there's more. Um, under the skills, we usually do um, all like the different skills plus the leveling one. I'm trying out a new um, sort of like uh, alphabetized group. So this is like your main attack skill. So as you can see here, you have ground slam to 8 to 12. But at 12, it gets replaced by Sunder. And I kept that in the, in the same like A. Just so you're understanding what I'm replacing it with. If there's no leveling, leveling video accompanying it. So uh, hopefully that'll make it very clear. Same here with obviously at early level you're using Ancestral Protector. And then you replace that same B with Warchief later on. Um, so we'll also put notes. Like for example here, um, Pulverize doesn't exist yet in Path of Building. And there's a few things that just, they're just not in Path of Building at the time that I'm making this guide. Um, this is going to happen a lot on, uh, on videos that are made around launch. Just Path of Building is not updated yet. So that's just not what much we can do about. And um, for the most part, I'll always put um, gems in a priority level. Like my, my first priority is always going to be Onslaught. Just because it ups your clear speed so much while, while killing. Um, and you can see like uh, different utilities and stuff. And another example here is plus blood and sand because that again doesn't exist in path of building um we also have uh different types of items so here we have early game axes mid game axes and in game axes um i think the jewels are displayed here yes so what the way i do this is i i make some like fairly okay items that are like you know depending on how fast you play somewhere that you'll have them between day one to three and um if you don't know how to get a tabula for example you can farm that in act nine fairly easily in blood aqueduct and uh, we go through here and it's um i never in my guides will put resists on the life gear because just you need to be resist capped that's very important 75 percent all resist remember that you lose resist in act five and ten um and then on the jewels, I'll try to do four slot jewels and try to say as many good stats as possible for that build. So there's no like, you don't see the same one twice here, but all of these work for the build. Hopefully that'll help. And then this is generally how I recommend rolling flasks. Um, there's even more in the notes as well. Uh, Mr. Madiki will generally go through and tell you exactly where to uh, buy the skill gems that you're needed. This is actually a tip by another streamer called Lyric who said it was sad there was nothing like this in Path of Exile guides. So I was like, that is actually a great idea for new players. Um, so we have that. So if you're wondering um, uh, where to buy things or if it can't be bought by your specific class, 
we call it a mule that you have to use another character to use it uh, or to buy it and uh, all the details for that is in here so hopefully it now makes more sense how to use the guides and how they work let's continue with the build guide for the gladiator guide that we recently did it was a very clear-cut case what you're going to choose is your ascendancy points and for the first normal and cruel lab it is for slayer as well it's a very good choice to go headsman as your first one while not particularly amazing on its own the node behind it bane of legends this stacks with onslaught and it's really great so definitely would recommend these as my first two now in the merc and uber lab we have a couple of other options so here we have um impact which is normally i would recommend this is a pretty good merc pickup and really really good damage now we're actually an rt build here while there are a lot of good options for going crit with slayer now and i'll hopefully put out some guides for that too but this one is specifically rt and then the accuracy part here doesn't matter um you have plus two melee weapon and unarmed range which is great for your cyclone and you have a five percent in kwe per enemy killed up to 50 percent and 15 percent more melee damage the closer you are to them well i think it's the closer which would make more sense um this is pretty great and you have masterful form especially if you're playing hardcore this is great now the way it works is say that you invest into your character you get maybe a couple of like plus one frenzy charges on your uh, belt boots wherever you can get them i can't remember exactly what implicit you can get plus one frenzy on right now but with some investment and on the skill tree you can get like seven or eight max frenzy charges fairly easily and that would then give you eight endurance charges as well you need to generate them but that can easily be done through either warlord's mark curse on hit ring blasphemy warlord's mark and um you can also get it by spamming enduring cry uh, so you have different options to to get these and uh, getting both is very very cool very strong now and and blood rate for the frenzy charges obviously endless hunger is also a pretty good note it makes you immune to bleeding the overkill damage leads his life is nice and uh, more importantly brutal fervor is behind it which does life leads effects are not removed of full life now the the whole like life leech effects are not removed of full life has taken a massive nerf recently but it's still fairly good so you have um harvester of foes now this is 15 percent attack speed while leeching that's amazing like that's a really really good node and you have several things that are like while leeching so while generally even if you don't have this node and you are a cyclone player you're probably going to be taking a lot of damage and leeching quite a lot anyway but being able to have it while you're in full life is definitely going to be a pretty big damage boost. This note as well, Gladiator's Perseverance has 20% attack damage while leeching. So both of these nodes having while leeching is definitely a nice added extra for having that. So worth thinking about. I would probably still go with Impact and Masterful Form, but um, they're all good choices. And as I said, a lot of builds are going to be using Overwhelm for um the way this works is it sets the base crit of the weapon to eight percent so if you have a nine percent crit weapon this is actually a bad thing however if you have a six five whatever base crit weapon it sets it to eight with no investment of the weapon so we're going to see a lot of ranged like lionized glare bow builds going for slayer the skills are pretty straightforward as i said in the gladiator guide as well and there's a lot of different things you can choose to level with because um here i'm recommending ground slam into sunder and uh, sunder is great it feels really good while leveling it's very strong a lot of the new skills have been getting flat added to the base skill gem and what that means is that instead of just leveling with like really good weapons a lot of your damage can come from the gem itself which on day one of elite can be really good so it's worth thinking about that and looking into that because Sunder is a red gem and most of the attack skills are with the exception of things like Lacerate and Reeve it's very easy for you to just swap in and out and test other gems and see like well maybe I really like this gem instead and the support gems should be the same for most things there's a couple of things that aren't in path of building yet as well like Pulverize the support gem should feel really great on a lot of these skills 
It makes it slower, but you should be like... Should already be at a really good attack speed and it should feel great in your build. Now, end game, you can use Sunder. There's a lot of different skills you can play around with too. There shouldn't be big changes. Um, the only big change I can think of is I believe Shockwave only works with staves or maces. So if you're wanting to try Shockwave, you have to not use axes basically. Um, and for, for Sunder, it should feel really great. My personal favorite is Cyclone. There's a few things that you want to make sure you have before switching to Cyclone. Namely, at least 25% movement speed boots. A Devotus Devotion is really good as well as if you can get one. Basically, as much movement speed as possible. And a big part of it is a at least a Chemist uh, Quicksilver of Adrenaline. Or, even better, an Alchemist Quicksilver of Adrenaline. These will make playing Cyclone feel so much better. Because it slows you down when you use it, and being able to just spin at a high speed through monsters feels really great, and it's a fun experience. Let's take a little look at the items. So we have early game, mid game, and end game axes. I've given some examples of axes as well. Um, I believe the DPS is going to be higher in the actual league, because I think it's getting a 40% damage boost on two-handed weapons. So you might end up with uh, quite a bit higher with a lower investment than this hopefully um the rest of the gear just has life on it for the early game get your own resists it doesn't really matter if it's on an amulet the rings the belt that's why i didn't specifically add resistances on there because the main thing you need to do is make sure that you have 75 fire cold and lightning rest after on act four do remember that you lose resistances in act five and in act ten um so you have to get more rest then and Tabula Rasa, if this is something you're thinking is pretty hard to farm, it's actually very easy. You go to Blood Aqueduct in Act 9, and it might take you a couple of hours, but it's very worth getting an early 6 link, and it makes the rest of the league very enjoyable for you. The Flasks as well, these are all like really, really good uh, prefixes. The Chemist is the most effective one. The most important suffixes for Flasks is your Bleed Removal and your Freeze Removal. After that, then Curse Removal is good, and Shock is like a nice added bonus. As for your jewels, which are available in the 123 skill tree, I've tried to add as many possible options, and um, they're, they're, I wouldn't like recommend necessarily getting exactly like these jewels, but these are all the good stats for the build. So generally, I would go with at least double damage and life, or even single damage and life. Now, if we look at like the mid game, here we have a couple of changes, like obviously a higher damage axe and um, there might be some good new unique axes. Comb's Primacy, I believe, is changing, so that might have gotten buffed in this league. Devotus Devotion, great item. Movement speed, attack speed, and uh, it's just really good. Armor chest piece, I would normally recommend trying to get a 6 sync at this point. If you get a, like, you know, a, one of the unique chests that I'll be recommending later, 6 linked already, that's great. But there's a lot of good options for getting a rare armor chest piece. So, some options are the Chains That Bind, Dapper Prodigy, and both of these aren't specifically armor, but if you don't get the one that you're hoping for, it's very easy to just sell that and hopefully buy the one that you need. There's also a Celestial Justicar card that gives a specific armor base, but that is a lot harder to farm. The residence map dropping Celestial Just Car at a very, very good drop rate, and it's easy to farm even in solo self found. But a tabula will still do you good at this point. Hemophilia might be expensive this thing because um, I can see a lot of people wanting these. But if you can pick one up, the bleed explosion is really, really nice. Part of the reason why Gladiator is a really nice early choice is because you don't need these gloves and. Um, that's why you can potentially switch to Slayer like we're showcasing here later on when you do have like a lot more funds. Everything else here is just like generally increased the numbers, but you can take a look at it. Stygian Vice as well. And then we're showing off a good example of a Murderous Eye. And here we have the addition of a Xeris Promise and Lion's Roar, which are great. Lion's Roar can be slightly annoying with Cyclone, but generally you're doing so much damage anyway and you're sort of just pushing it in front of you. Hasn't been a big problem for me personally. Endgame wise. So here we have a bigger axe. This is um, 
30 or 40 more damage than in his favor. We'll see how much and how hard that will be to craft this thing. Hopefully I should have an axe crafting guide up on YouTube by now in the crafting series. Carcass Jack is one of the best things to pick up here. You have a couple of other options like a lore weave is really good, really cheap and easy to get as well. Even if you're SSF, uh, slap on some rarity gear while you're farming. You will notice that you get quite a lot more uh, unique rings. Uh, Belly of the Beast is a pretty great pickup as well. Now for two-handers, Combs is actually a pretty good choice because you can six sync your Valax. Um, or eventually maybe a Disfavor might be a good pickup. And uh, then you can like not worry about uh, having your six sync chest. So there's a lot of different good options here. I mean that you might struggle a little bit on int on this build. So you can pick up 30 int on the skill tree and try to craft int on your rings and your amulet. That's also why I recommend getting a lapis amulet so you do get that 30 extra int there. Worst case scenario, use a lower level conch effect because that's probably the main um, blocking for the int. Other than that, there shouldn't be too many changes on the axis. As I mentioned, at serious this favor is definitely going to be a nice pickup for these 200 builds. This is a really, really good League Starter build. However, Gladiator has some advantages, like the free bleed explosion early on. So one good option is to start out with the Gladiator and then later respect to the Slayer. This is obviously going to cost a lot of regret points. Um, if you don't know how to respect Ascendancies, you basically unspec all the points, which cost five regrets per. And then once you've done that, you click the altar at the end of the Ascendancy trial and boom, you get the option to ascend between each three again. Now, the bandits for this build is skill points. You kill all the bandits. For pantheons, the crab immune to stun pantheon can be really good. Uh, however, the Lunaris pantheon gives you movement speed when enemies are nearby and has some pretty good upgrades on it as well. For the minor ones, Shakari is a really, really big pickup, especially for life builds, because it gives you the option to be immune to poison once you've upgraded it. Now, this requires that you um, use a Divine Vessel in the tier 15 map Desert Springs, but definitely worth it once you can get that. A lower level alternative can be to do the Dig map with the Divine Vessel, which is, I believe, a tier 11, and that gives you movement speed if you haven't been hit recently. So there's some good options there. That's pretty much all I have to say for this guide. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. We're also translating the majority of the uh, shorter videos to Korean, Russian, and Brazilian Portuguese. So hopefully that helps a lot um, who can't speak English as well. And uh, the subtitles are on in English as well. And this should be for most of the videos that uh, we're working on. If you have any questions, you can drop by my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash Zizarin. And if you have any questions, I should be able to help with most things. I'll be streaming a lot at the League Start. Hope you guys have a great time in Legion. Thanks for watching and try to die less than I do.